You hear that? You hear that? That's special. There's a lot of lions, tigers, and bears, but they even one razor back. Just made Sports Center again. Arkansas is in all heaven. They won the first ever national championship. All I want you to do tonight is play your best. Don't worry about making a mistake. You can make a mistake that fight as long as you're going 100 miles an hour. The coaching changes continue, and the Lady Razorbacks went east. We'll get into that in a minute, but episode 58 is brought to you by Homefield. Homefield is home of premium vintage collegiate apparel, and you can use promo code Variety Sports in all caps to receive 15% off your order. They've got fantastic red classic Arkansas bomber jacket that is fantastic. If you go look at it, it it's a perfect gift for any loved ones that's a huge Razorback fan. It's vintage, got that vintage look, that feel. So go check them out today. They got some fantastic stuff. Like we say, constantly coming out with new gear, new different designs, different things like that. So go check them out and get 15% off that first order thanks to Variety Sports Network. And so we'll jump in here. No big portal news here of late. Everything's been kind of quiet as far as portal guys jumping in and committing. All the really big name commits have been have made their decisions and you're just waiting on a kind of some not lower level but not as well known guys to make their decision. Uh, the only additional one entered the portal for Arkansas is wide receiver Marlon Crockett. He was a walk-on last season, so nothing too terrible there. No additional commits for Arkansas yet. I know Pittman said in his press conference last week that he'd like to go out and get a couple more linemen, maybe another linebacker, and um, maybe another wide receiver or two. So we'll see what they do in the rest of the portal. And the only other addition guys leaving, Dwight McGlother officially announced that he is leaving for the NFL draft. So, you know, hate to see him go, but wish him the best there. Um, anything you want to add there, Seth? No, nothing too crazy. I'm kind of all quiet for now for the most part. Like you said, some trickling in news here and there and a couple guys to keep track of. But for the most part, most of the splash transfers, um, either transferring out or transferring in, um, have – kind of made their their rounds through there might be kind of some late guys into the transfer portal d- different things um something to watch out for you know the the news broke recently that that wide receivers coach Kenny Guyton um is actually going to be leaving the university um to go take on the same role at University of Wisconsin so um it'll be kind of something to keep our eyes on if any of the wide receivers that have previously announced that they're staying you know if if they're minds change and they have some late portal entries there but hoping not hopefully we can keep most of those guys most of the guys that announced they were staying were our our starting receivers so hoping they can come back and and have some instant impact there but um overall nothing too crazy um still not 100 percent sure where kj is going i think he's had several different trips um i think he's in florida right now um supposedly having a visit with ucf that is a speculative landing spot for him so Nothing official yet. He's still taking visits and things of that nature. But as soon as we hear anything there, we'll, we'll let you guys know as well. But that's the only one that I'm kind of waiting and curious to see where he ends up landing. Yeah, same here. Hopefully, as, as long as he stays out of the SEC, I'll be happy for him. Um, like you like you said, yeah, the, the heat now is that he is really interested in UCF. Uh, I'm surprised there's not more talk or more, you know, smoke for him going to TCU. Um, you know, Chandler Morse entered the portal. So you, everybody kind of thought, you know, that was the piece that was waiting to fall. KJ was entering the portal. He needed somewhere to go. Browse is at TCU, but they had Chandler Morse. Well, he decided to enter the portal. So like I said last week, if I had to bet, that's where my money would go that he would go. But now it looks like he's trending more towards potentially UCF and, you know, working with Gus Malzahn, who runs a very similar system as to what Browse ran here at Arkansas. So, you know, even going there, it would be fantastic for them to get a, a player of KJ's caliber, go join in the Big 12 and see how he does over there. And not, not going to say it's lesser competition, but, you know, it's not the SEC. So, you know, you had Texas and Oklahoma come over to the SEC for a reason. Look at that there. Like Seth said, hate to see Coach Guyton leave. You know, he was great 
a fantastic recruiter, brought in several wide receivers. Some of the guys after that news broke yesterday that came out and said that, you know, if it wasn't for him, they wouldn't be Razorbacks. They wouldn't be here. You know, a couple of guys to note, you know, Isaiah Satania, I believe previously before committing to Arkansas, he was committed to Texas A&M actually. And then David Dozier, you know, four-star freshman that came in, you know, said Coach Guyton's the one that got me here. He said he came in, talked to my family, everything, and hate to see him leave. Ar uh, Andrew Armstrong hates to see him leave. You know, these guys really bought into him as a position coach. And when you have guys like that, it's hard to replace that. But I know Coach Pittman and Coach Petrino is going to go out there and get the guest, best guy possible that they can find to come in and kind of fill those shoes. And then – as far as recruiting and everything, Arkansas got a fantastic Christmas gift on Christmas Day as four-star linebacker Bradley Shaw out of Hoover, Alabama, committed to Arkansas on Christmas Day. He put out a pretty cool video, so if you haven't checked that out, go look at it. He is a 6'1", 216-pound linebacker that is ranked the number eight linebacker in the nation and number one, one number 101 overall prospect. So that's big for Arkansas to go into Alabama and get you know one of their top recruits but also he's top 10 in the country. So we're really, you can see Pittman's addressing those needs that, you know, we lost a few guys out of our room with, with some experience. So we might have a young linebacker room, but I think, you know, we're going to have a combination of both experience and youth. Cause you know, we got the linebacker out of Georgia, Xavier Sori, you know, hopefully a few, a few other guys return that are some upperclassmen. So, you know, I think things could be, Turning in a good direction for this linebacker room, some youth, some some transfers coming in. But what's your take on this commitment from this kid out of Alabama that's a four-star? I, I thought he was kind of a steal getting out of Alabama, honestly. He had offers from pretty much everywhere. <laughs> um, so being able to kind of get him locked in, I, I think he was able to see what um, the linebacking position in Arkansas has been the last couple of years and the the exposure that you can get – coming into Arkansas and playing linebacker, you, you if you're a top talent kind of guy, you can really get in there, play the majority of snaps, um, be a Grant Morgan, be a Drew Sanders, be a Jaheim Thomas, somebody I'm hoping that sticks around. Um, hopefully, Xavier Sori is somebody that can kind of come in and, and replicate Drew Sanders' success. Um, so I, I think some of the high school kids around the country have seen that over the last few years and the way the defense improved this past year, if you were in any type of semblance of SEC following, you, you saw that the, the steps and that they made as a defense overall. And then plus kind of the highlighting um, plays that the linebackers at the U of A have gotten. Um, it, it's easy to come in, get some significant playing time. If you're a very good player and work your way to the NFL potentially. And I think that's, you know, what a lot of these kids want to do. And, you know, somebody like this, yeah, definitely could have gone to Alabama, definitely could have gone to Auburn, Georgia, you know, wherever. He had offers from pretty much the entire SEC. Um, but you you run the risk maybe sitting the bench a little bit more. There's four- and five-star guys ahead of you, you know, several layers deep. Um, that's just something Arkansas doesn't have quite as much of. So, you don't have to fight quite as hard for that playing time. I mean, Drew Sanders, perfect example. We've talked about it over and over and over. Played quite a bit at Alabama, but came here and played a lot and very, it played very, very well. You know, definitely somebody that was able to shine in our system. So is I think this is great being able to go and get these guys out of high school now instead of kind of have to depend on the portal to get the four star linebackers. Um, so I think that bodes well for us and, and maybe kind of keeping a little bit more depth there in, in case you do have a, a season ending injury or something like that, unfortunately. Um, so having a little extra depth there is going to be nice. And this dude's legit. Some of his highlight footage was pretty incredible. So I'm excited about this kid for sure. Yeah, you've got to love the turnaround that Travis Williams and Marcus Woodson have done with this defense, especially look at the secondary with Marcus Woodson, where that's his specialty, you know, vastly improved from last season. And I think that's majorly due to just depth. We were able to bring in a ton of depth, which, you know, guys were able to stay fresh and, you know, the talent was a little bit more than what we had previously. And then you look at Travis Williams. He's a linebacker's coach by trade. You look at what he did last year, bringing in Jaheim Thomas, you know, having Poopaw, that unfortunately left. But, you know, you see him going out and getting guys to come in, like you said, buy in and see, hey, you can come to Arkansas and get some playing time. Sure, you could go to, like you said, the Alabamas, the Auburns, the Georgias. But, you know, you look at the guys that transfer out of there that are four or five stars, nine out of ten times, the reason they're leaving is because they're not getting playing time. 
but that's because they're behind four and five star guys. So I don't blame guys for leaving and going to get playing time. But I think that's where we've said it before. Arkansas benefits from the portal is we're able to go out and get really talented guys because they want to play right away. And I think now we're upping our recruiting. So now you can bring in a combination of experience, but also guys you can develop and kind of set yourself up for the future, if you will. So, you know, you've got a guy on the roster that played some last year that had some promise, Brad Spence. Look at him last year. He he didn't get a ton of playing time, but the playing time he did, you know, get early in the season into some, you know, some of those lower level games, he performed really well. And, you know, he's just going to have a full off season to develop kind of bigger, faster, stronger, if he will, and, you know, come out and, you know, there's going to be an open spot in that, on that starting roster for a linebacker with poop all leaving. So, you know, these guys are going to want to come in and compete for that. And like you said, there's been no word on Jaheim Thomas who started a lot of the season. So who knows, you know, there could be one, maybe two, if he decides to leave or, you know, whatever. So I think this defense turnaround has been fantastic. You know, great job, Travis Williams, Marcus Woodson, you know, keep that up. And then, like we said, we're excited to see what the offensive side is going to do. You know, I've seen names thrown out there as far as who we might go after to replace Coach Guyton. You know, one name that Arkansas fans will be familiar with is Garrick McGee. He's the wide receivers coach at Louisville. It was reported earlier today that there was interest, but then came out and it was updated that he hadn't been reached out to Arkansas, but that's a name that's been thrown out there. I don't know how likely it is. Um, wide receivers coach from Texas A&M, you know, they let go of their staff. So he's available. If he comes on, maybe he can convince Evan Stewart to come on over. Um, who knows? I mean, there's a lot of good options. You know, I know with their vast experience in the game, Petrino, Pittman, they know a lot of guys. It's probably not going to be hard to get a guy to come in here with the talent that's on the roster and what's coming in and things of the nature. So we'll have to see what they do. You know, I don't know what their timeline is. They probably won't get somebody in pretty quickly as we're approaching, you know, the end of the portal for the winter anyway. You'll have a it open back up in the spring, but, you know, you're going to have that January, February kind of going into spring ball starting up pretty soon because a lot of guys come in early out of high school, enroll in January so they can get started working out and, you know, learning the playbook and, you know, acclimating to the college game. So it'll be interesting to see what way Arkansas goes, who they contact, kind of who they interview and ultimately hire to replace Coach Guyton. But, you know, hate to see him leave. Great job here. You know, he stepped up this season after the Enos firing, stepped up in that offensive coordinator role. Probably that was a role not many people just wanted to raise their hand and step into with how the season was going, but he he stepped up there. You know, you saw the emotions after him and KJ between him and KJ when we went on the road and beat Florida after this really tough stretch, and it was his you know first game as OC taking over. And I think it's just a testament to how he was with the players and the kind of relationships he built. So we wish him the best of luck and. Can't wait to see who we get in to replace him. So we'll take a quick ad break here, and we'll jump over to Arkansas basketball news. You know what I like? I like to be comfortable. I also love representing my favorite sports teams. And in the clutch, I am able to have the best of both worlds. In the Clutch Apparel is your one-stop shop for all things sports. They have officially licensed gear from all your favorite teams and players from the NHL, MLB, NFL, and more. They have sports classic tees from yesteryear and beyond. Check out their full website in the link down below. When you enter the promo code Variety Sports, you get 10% off everything site-wide. Feel comfortable with your sports apparel and go over to their website now at intheclutch.com. And don't forget to use our code Variety Sports to get 10% off. All right, we are back now, and we will jump into Arkansas basketball as the Arkansas women's team went east down to Florida to play in the West Palm Beach Classic over kind of that winter break timeline. Their first matchup was against Illinois, where they got the win 60-59. to Leading scorers for Arkansas were Talia Scott and Smart, Smart Spencer with 17 points each. You had Miriam Dowdle with 9 points and Sailor Poffenbarger with 8. On the rebounding side, you have Sailor Poffenbarger with 19 points. Followed by Miriam Dowd and Samara Spencer with four rebounds each, and Michaela Daniels with three. And then shooting wise, Arkansas shot the ball shot the ball forty one point four percent from the field, twenty four fifty eight. 
17.4% from the three-point line, going four of 23, and 50% from the free throw line, eight out of 16. So you'd like to see that percent a little bit higher. You know, it was a one-point win. So, you know, if you make a few more of those free throws, it's not as a, a close, you know, game-winning shot type of game that you end up getting the win in. Yeah, that's very true. I, you know, threes and the free throws kind of weren't quite what we've been used to. They've had some games where they've struggled from the free throw line, and then they had some games where they've done very well from the free throw line. So got to get a little bit more consistency there. Um, overall, though, good win uh, against a, a pretty decent Illinois team. Um, the one that jumps off the page to me is 19 boards by Sailor Poffenbarger. That's that's getting up and getting some work in for sure on, on the offensive side and the defensive side of the glass. So um, great job there. I think that was critical in us actually sealing this win is just the, the work that she did on the, the rebounding department. But overall, got a few things to improve on, but they played well and got the win here. Yeah, very true. And you jump over to Arkansas men's basketball as they took on Abilene Christian on the 21st. They got that win 83-73. to Leading scores for Arkansas in this game were Tremont Mark with 25 points. You had Cleef Battle with 18, so Battle getting back to his regular form. And then you had Keon Minifield with 11. So he, as the more playing time he gets, you see him contributing a lot more, you know, jumping into, you know, top three and scoring here. Leading rebounders in this game, you had Arkansas with Tremont Mark with 11 rebounds, followed by Chandler Lawson with 10, and Keon Minifield with six. So, you know, he's jumping up there, really contributing. You know, I think as he ramps up, you're going to see his minutes increase, you know, substantially. You know, he's a guy that I've talked to several people, and it's all agreed that kind of he needs to be playing 30-plus minutes a night just with the way he's able to just come in and, you know, contribute with the kind of limited minutes he's on as he's kind of getting into game shape. Um, you look at shooting for Arkansas in this game, men shot really well in this game, shooting 51.9% from the field going 27-52, 46% from the three-point line going 7-15, and 78.6% from the free throw line making 22-28. of 28. So all around a great shooting night for Arkansas. You know, that 46% from the three-point line is like what, what we know that they can do like they did at the beginning of the season. That's what they need to do if they want to continue to win games, shoot well from the three-point line, shoot well all around. But you you saw this game, you know, Tremont Mark had one of the – his higher scoring games he had this season, similar to, you know, that game he had in the Bahamas before he got hurt. So, you know, you see guys stepping up. But I still think there's some things that this team has got to work on. You know, you look at a team shooting this well, but you only win by 10. No discredit to Abilene Christian, but, you know, we should have won this game by 20. If we're shooting 50% from the field, 45% from three-point range, you're shooting 10% better than the NBA average. So I think the work needs to be done on the defensive side of the ball. You see Keon Minifield kind of helping this offense out, kind of getting things jump-started, if you will. Um, So what's your take there? Yeah, man, I I really agree. I feel like Minifield's come in and, and kind of provided a little bit of a spark on just some consistency in distributing the ball on offense. Um, There's been times off and on all year, and we've talked about it before, where the ball seems to get kind of stagnant um, in certain players' hands. It almost seems like everybody's kind of had it, had the the bug there where they just kind of grab the ball, hold on to it on a possession, and then do some isolation shot. We're not running very well on pick and rolls when we should be, things of that nature. Um, And it seems like Minifield kind of helped us snap out of that a little bit. And so when he's on the floor, I think, Good things happen. He's not quite as careless as as maybe Devo has been here and there. I don't want to discredit Devo at all. He's done awesome things for us. Um, but Minifield seems a little bit more um, controlled as he's kind of running the offense. So he's kind of been a bright spot in the little bit of playing time that he's got. And to your point, I expect him to get a little bit more playing time. Just just what I, what all he's been able to accomplish so far. Um, overall, this is a good game for Arkansas. Um, you know, everybody shot well. Every, everybody was kind of getting their own. One person that didn't shoot very well, in, in my opinion, was uh, Trevor Brazil. He just – to me, he looked like himself early in the year, and then as the competition has gotten a little bit tougher as the year gone on, I'm not sure if he's hurt himself a little bit. I know he, he sprained his ankle earlier this season, and I'm not 100% sure if he's fully back from that necessarily or if he's playing a little bit um, gun-shy maybe. He just doesn't look as aggressive as he has – um, kind of in the early part of this season and then obviously the beginning of last season before his season ended, unfortunately. So I 
I hope he can kind of get his confidence back and not overthink another potential injury situation to where he can he can kind of get back to being that aggressive guy that almost looks for those posterized dunks, things of that nature. I haven't seen that from him in the last couple of games, and I think it's kind of thrown off his rhythm. Um, so, so look for him to kind of maybe get a little bit more involved on the offensive side of things and maybe get his sea legs back under him a little bit more. Um, but then you got – Obviously, guys like Tremont Marking, Caliph Battle, or Khalif Battle. I'm not 100 sure how you pronounce it. I think I've gone back and forth all year, but any given night, those guys can get you 20, um, and that's that's huge when you've got players kind of all over the place like that. Um, you, you got guys that have been scoring off and on all year with like Chandler Lawson, some um, Jalen Graham. You've seen Makai Mitchell break double figures a few times. So having guys kind of all over your your roster that can score when needed, depending on the way the matchups fall out, is is a very good thing to have. And so obviously Tremont Mark and, and Battle were letting it go from three this game. They hit several of them, and I think that definitely helped us propel to a 10-point win. But to your point, got to get a lot better on defense because this definitely – it should have been a 15- to 20-point victory and not just a 10-point victory. Um, Abilene and Christian kind of hang around a lot more than they should have due to some turnover issues on our end. But overall, um, I was really encouraged to see the free throw shooting. Um, that's something that I look at pretty closely week in and week out as we're playing because I can get really frustrated – when it starts to dip below, you know, that 75, 73% mark. And we sit there and bang a few off the back of the rim or something, and, and you miss out on a lot of free points. And those can come back to bite you, thankfully. You know, this game was a, a testament that we can shoot well. Um, we just got to do it consistently. But overall, great win um, against a pretty solid Abilene Christian team. And I'm hoping they can kind of use this as a, a little bit of a uh, – propelling win and you know going into conference play here so shortly so yeah I, I agree I, I think it's like you said that that free throw percentage can be the you know sometimes the difference between a win and a loss you know we just talked about that women's game you know that it was a one point loss and you see they shot 50 percent. so you know if they shot that 75 percent, that probably wouldn't have been that close of a game but you look at it and you know that's where it falls but and you brought up something else i want to talk about you know you you see Trevor Brazil absent from, you know, leading and scoring and rebounding. He's a guy that, you know, he's got to be able to give us the numbers that, you know, we saw at the beginning of the season for us to be successful. You look at that, this Abilene Christian game, he played 15 minutes when he should be playing, you know, maybe 25, 30. And, you know, I think I've seen some things where, you know, maybe he's gotten his playing time reduced because of maybe lack of effort on defense. You know, you look at, you know, we've said it before, if you don't play defense from us, you're not going to get a ton of playing time. And, you know, even a guy as talented as Brazil on the offensive side, you still got to come down and contribute. Um, I, I think we've seen maybe a little bit of pattern since the Bahamas of, you know, that not lack of effort, but, you know, just not as intense on the defensive side of the ball. And, you know, maybe some childish type things that he's done through throughout <laughs> these few games where you know get some technicals things of that nature you can't do that and expect to be have success and you know Mus is not going to put up with behavior like that and lack of defense intensity so you know i think that might, might be what you're you know seeing him trying to get a message to him saying hey you know you're good but if you don't contribute on the defensive side of the ball too it doesn't matter you're still not gonna get as much playing time as some of these guys that kind of go out there and give it 110% on the defensive side of the ball that, you know, you look at comparatively Chandler Lawson 25 minutes in this game. Not saying that he's not just as good as Brazil, but we know what Brazil can do, whereas Lawson's been a kind of off-the-bench role type player his career, and you see him coming in and, you know, he's working hard. He had nine points in this game, not a ton of points, but he's out there working hard on defense and, you know, affecting shots and whatever it may be. So, you know, I'm hoping maybe he's just – trying to get out of a funk or something that, you know, maybe he's not 100% from the ankle, something of that nature. But, you know, with conference play just around the corner, we're, we're going to need him. We're going to need guys to step up, and we can't be going through droughts like we talked about. So I said it before, still believe in Must. I think he's got he, he's going to get this team in shape. It's just taking a little bit more work. Hopefully this is that, you know, conference slump we got normally coming in, just happened a little bit earlier in the year, and we can – jump into conference play, and get rolling pretty quickly. So we'll jump back over to Arkansas women's basketball as they continued in the West Palm Beach Classic against UIC on the 21st as well. They got the win in this game 66-58. to 
Leading scores for the Lady Backs in this game was Talia Scott with 26 points. You had Sailor Poffenbarger with 17 points and Samara Spencer with 13. Leading in rebounding, you had Sailor Poffenbarger with 11 rebounds, so getting herself a nice double-double there. You had Miriam Dowda with 8 rebounds and Talia Scott with 6. Shooting-wise in this game, Arkansas shot 37.9% from the field, going 22 of 58. 40% from the three-point line, going 11 of 27. And 84% from the free-throw line, going 11 of 13. So, you know, correcting that low free-throw percentage shooting in the previous game, you see them 30% better. You can't ask for more than that. You know, a well-rounded shooting game from them as well in this game that allowed them to get the win here. And so, you know, another great game by the, the Lady Ragebacks. Yeah, very true. Kind of to your point, they they got they got a few things corrected as far as the free throws go, and then had a few more open looks from three. They let quite a few fly with twenty seven shots, but made eleven of them for a very that's a good clip. So um, overall, I mean, they shot the ball really well. Um, you know, it leads to an eight point win, pretty comfortable victory for the most part there. So um, none other than Talia Scott balling out again. Seems like that's the norm lately. Yeah. I mean, she's putting the SEC and college women's college basketball world on notice. You know, speaking of Talia Scott, an interesting stat for you, you know, big surprise here. She was named week seven SEC freshman of the week. But you look at it through the first seven weeks of the season, she's been named SEC freshman of the week five times already. So five out of seven is not bad coming in. And she's just, you know, instant contributor, a supreme talent. And I think, you know, she's going to be a key piece that if – Coach neighbors can keep her in the system, get some pieces around her. Next couple of years for Razorback women's basketball could look pretty good. You know, it, it almost seems like that's the building block to start really getting a program in the right direction. And you look at what she's coming and doing, putting them up, you know, double digit points a game, really contributing, not afraid to get in there and, you know, get, get rebounds. You know, she's one of those players that, you know, she's a smaller point guard, but, She's still getting in there and banging around and getting those boards. And so currently she's averaging 22.9 points per game and averaging 35.9 minutes a game. So nearly playing the entire game, averaging nearly 23 points a game as a freshman. I think you, you've you got to be extremely happy with that if you're coaching neighbors and, you know, what you're able to get here for Arkansas. You know, on the rebounding side, you know, Sailor Poffenbarger, like we said, she's just been pulling down everything, averaging 12.3 rebounds per game. You know, you're really seeing that year two leap for her as, you know, she's really stepped up that game. Still works, there's still some work to do on the, the offensive side as far as scoring. She She's up and down there, you know, double-double in this last game. And then, you know, she'll have a game where she'll come out and score four or five points. So be more consistent on the scoring-wise, but, you know, keep pulling down those rebounds. It's fantastic. Yeah, they've been fun to watch. Um, they've they've kind of had that awesome story of Talia Scott that's really garnered a lot of attention which is a good thing as far as, you know, potentially bringing in more recruits, uh, more transfers that it's the way of the world nowadays, you know, you got to reload each year with either, you know, freshmen or, you know, significant transfers, things of that nature. So having players come in like that, that can really shine and garner the university some attention, you know, in a sport that doesn't gain as much attention as, as some others. So that's been awesome to see um, just kind of what she's been able to help the university out with as a whole. And I think that's going to, you know, potentially be a domino that cascades some other dominoes down the line that can help this program keep on building um, where it seemed like, you know, the end of last year, the wheels didn't necessarily fall off, but it almost kind of felt like they were going the wrong direction for a few. And then the, the transfer portal bit us. And then uh, for us to kind of come back, out of that and bounce back and, and kind of be in an upward trajectory right now is really awesome to see. Yeah, that's very true. Luckily, statistically, you look at women's basketball, you know, you don't have a lot of people leaving super early. So, you know, that's a hope that, you know, you can hold on to Talia Scott for, you know, two, three years, maybe, maybe even four, you know, doubt we keep her that long, but, you know, with that tremendous talent, you know, she can really help build something in Arkansas. So that's fantastic. And we'll jump over to our upcoming events as we're getting ready to wrap up here. Arkansas men's basketball will be taking on UNC Wilmington this Saturday, the 30th at 4 p.m. So last non-conference game before we jump into conference play. Same for Arkansas women's basketball on Sunday, the 31st. They will be taking on Incarnate Word at 1 p.m. And then you have Arkansas women's basketball going on the road just five days later to take on Kentucky at 6 p.m. 
Then you have Arkansas men's basketball conference plays here. Auburn's coming to the bud at 1 p.m. on January 6th. And then you have Arkansas women's basketball coming back home to play Georgia on the 7th at 1. And then Arkansas swimming diving is getting some action as they take on Auburn on the road at 4 p.m. on January 9th. So lots of things coming up, a lot of basketball as we get in conference play. You know, things are going to really ramp up here. You know, before you know, we're just like a month, month and a half away from baseball and softball. You know, that's a fantastic time of season up here in northwest Arkansas with Coach Diefel and Coach Van Horn, two of the the best in, you know, I feel like the country. Honestly, you, you look at those those two coaches and you can't be happier with where Arkansas is at there. So – As always, don't forget to like and subscribe to the podcast on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. Don't forget to go like our YouTube page. You know, we're coming out with a ton of great interviews and whatnot. We've got another one coming for you this week. So I'm not going to reveal it yet, even though this is going to be coming out after it. If you haven't had a chance to go listen to it, go check it out. It's fantastic stuff. So thank you for listening to today's episode of Woo Pig Weekly, and we'll be right back here next week. 